Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> oh, I know that's on. I can hear that. Um, it's good to see everybody here today. Uh, a lot of uh, interesting speakers speaking about some very fascinating topics. And coincidentally, you're all here at this moment to listen to a talk on listening. How appropriate. <laughs> so what is listening? Um, most of us will say we're good listeners, and that's really good. I'm always encouraged by this. But let's look at the difference between listening and hearing. I'd like to say that hearing is a function and listening is a desire. Um, if you hear and you can hear well, you're going to hear everything. But it doesn't mean that you pay attention to everything that you hear. When you want to listen, listen it, you have to take it to a higher level. You have to really immerse yourself and focus on the person who's speaking. Um, occasionally, um, my wife... Um, might say to me, um, honey, and my wife calls me honey, and occasionally my wife might say to me, honey, did you hear me? And my response would be, occasionally, I heard you, but I just wasn't listening. Now, a lot of you might think, there's a guy who knows how to get himself in trouble. And that's true, I do, but that's another discussion. But it's interesting, though, that we really do have to understand when we've actually listened to someone. We just can't be superficial about it. If somebody's going to take the time to talk to us, we should certainly take the time, the level of energy, to listen to what they have to say. So focusing on the speaker and not your own thoughts. I don't want to pretend to be the only person who hears voices. The rest of you hear voices, right? It might, yes, 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 please all say yes. Okay, yes. Good, thank you. Um, and these voices can be, you know, pretty simple voices, like, did I pay the electric bill this month? Or let's see, was it was it a, a, a dozen loaves of bread, a, a gallon of eggs, and, and a loaf of milk? I can't remember what I'm supposed to pick up on the way home. These voices are ours. We've earned them. And we have to pay honor to these. But when we're talking to someone else and when someone's speaking to us, sometimes these voices have the worst opportunities to raise themselves up inside of our heads and they can become a bit confusing. Sometimes we're focusing more on what we're hearing inside of our own minds than what the person who's speaking to us is actually saying. You can't eliminate these voices. These are yours. If anybody in here has ever tried to meditate, and um, anybody who has tried to meditate, you're going to know is one of the things is they say you have to clear your mind. You're going to know the harder you work to clear your mind, the noisier it gets, doesn't it? It's a lot of traffic comes in. So, I, I'm going to say it's challenging, if not if possible, impossible to clear your mind, but my suggestion would be is honor the voices that you're hearing, honor the noise inside your head, and increase your focus on the person that you're listening to. You honor both yourself and the person that, you're, that you are listening to. Asking questions to gain better understanding. You might all be familiar with this. It's called paraphrasing. And I think paraphrasing serves three really powerful purposes in listening. Paraphrasing means that you repeat a statement back to a person who has just said something to you. So paraphrasing would be a positive in that the person that you speak to, who's speaking to you is going to say, wow, they really are listening to me. They were able to repeat back everything that I had just said in that one or two sentences. Another great advantage of paraphrasing is you might have taken a statement that was said to you wrong. So if you repeat back what you believe you've heard, it gives the speaker an opportunity to correct you and enlighten you and educate you and say, that's not what I said, this is what I said. And then the third benefit is, maybe the speaker did say something to you that the speaker didn't mean to say and gave you the wrong impression. So by paraphrasing that statement back to them, the speaker can say, that's not the impression that I want you to leave here today with. This is what I truly meant to say. So paraphrasing is good. You don't want to paraphrase everything that somebody says to you. You can almost make it sound like you're mocking them. But you want to make sure that on the points that you probably need clarification on and that you didn't completely understand, try paraphrasing. Reducing and ignoring external distractions. I don't know where you go to do that. Um, the external distractions are the everyday noise that we all have in our lives. Some of the noise, actually, we get so used to, it just becomes white noise to us. It could be the sounds of the workplace, it could be the sounds of the city, wherever it is that we seem to spend our days. 
Um, my wife and I live with our two cats. Our children have grown and moved out on their own. Uh, so you would think that we had a pretty good environment at home where the two of us could just focus on each other. But sometimes the home, sometimes that place where we spend so much of our lives, there's a lot of reminders around. Trying to have a conversation and you go, oh, I've got to check my emails, or the phone starts ringing, or any one of those distractions. I suggest that sometimes it might be a good idea if, if the two of you just go to someplace neutral, someplace new and unfamiliar to both of you. That way there you don't have any of those old distractions around and you'll have an opportunity to truly focus on each other. We enjoy, when we, uh, when do we choose to listen and not to listen? When we enjoy or agree with what we're listening to. Some of us may love to listen to music. Um, I have my own style of music that I like to listen to. I'm kind of a renaissance man, but my sons would disagree with that. When my youngest son was much younger, he was listening to a style of music that, and I won't get into it or describe it, I had a difficult time actually calling it music. But he would say to me, Dad, if you just listen to it, you'll understand it. And I'm thinking, I don't want to understand it. I'm kind of a Beatles guy, you know, that's kind of the meat and potatoes of music, and I was pretty comfortable with that. But um, we are drawn to what we like. My wife Sue and I have grandchildren. We love listening to our grandchildren talk. It's beautiful. When they become teenagers, we're probably not going to be so thrilled about it anymore. <laughs> but now at the age that they are, whenever they have something to say, we treat it as something miraculous, especially the three-year-old who's just learning how to talk. And she's really going to be one heck of a teenager. So I want to try to absorb as much of her conversation as I can right now while it's still very much enjoyable. Um, speaker prejudice. We all have it. Um, there are people that we might be drawn to. We might want to go and listen to uh, somebody speaking on a subject that we like and appreciate. Or it could come down to coworkers or family members. Somebody that we have respect for, somebody that we have listened to speak before, we've had an opportunity to listen to them, we enjoy what they have to say, so we experience a positive, uh, a positive event in listening to them. We normally won't tend to go to listen to someone whose views are entirely different than ours, and I'm going to speak about that a little bit more, but we will, we will show prejudice towards the people that we can voluntarily listen to. But when I say voluntarily, as I look around the room, I, I know that there's a number of you who have to attend meetings, if not on a weekly, but possibly even a daily basis. And I'm sure once you see that meeting pop up in your schedule, you've got all sorts of thoughts going on inside your mind saying, this is not going to be a good experience, but I am required to go. And um, this is very important, that what you're listening to is not a threat to your core values. There are so many controversies going on in our society today. Um, to name a couple, there's um, uh, gun control advocates, gun right advocates, there's pro-life and there's pro-choice. I've talked to people on both sides of the fence and there's two statements that they'll make about the opposing side and that is that um, they're agreeing that they themselves are completely right and they will also agree that the opposing side is completely wrong. Have you ever wondered how in these social controversies that exist, how so many people can be so absolutely right and so many people can be so absolutely wrong about the same subject? Let me suggest this to you. If you're a firm believer in a particular social dilemma that we're suffering through right now or suffering or experiencing, and I think the two I mentioned will be with us for generations, go and listen to an opposing speaker all, the, the very least that you would have to gain is an understanding of what the opposing speaker is talking about. And that's enlightenment, that's education. If you're going to decide to still maintain your own stand, you're not doing it from an educated perspective and not a perspective of a limited amount of education or knowledge that you might have. But here's the scary thing about changing our core values. A lot of people might be afraid to listen to somebody who's Values are different than theirs for the fear of actually being changed. The fear of actually hearing something that they might agree with, which they had up to that point in their lives sworn that they would never, ever agree with. Keep this in mind. Only you can change you. Nobody else can change you. So if the fear of change 
from listening to someone whose values and belief are different than yours is what keeps you from listening to them, realize that it would be probably one of the greatest opportunities that you ever had in your life. But listen to them. The most you can get out of it is an understanding, and an understanding is truly a fantastic thing, especially when you start to form your opinions about people and about organizations and about thoughts and ideas. Are you listening to me? I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but I would say that um, most of us have heard that said to us. And I'm going to guess that most of us might have said that to somebody else. Are you listening to me or um, more or less you're not listening to me? I think back to my sons when they were growing up, and both of my sons are in their 30s right now. But as a dad, I can remember the statement being said to me, Dad, you're not listening to us. And though I can't remember what I exactly said, being the stubborn guy that I was, I probably came off with something like, yes, I am. Really inside my head, I'm saying, I've heard it all before. And that's true, I've heard it all before, but I probably never listened <laughs> once. What I wouldn't give to have those moments back, what I missed. Please don't judge or comment, just listen. If you're a good listener, people are going to be drawn to you. They're going to want to talk to you. But they don't want you to solve their problems, and they don't want you to give advice. What they really want is to be able to listen to themselves talking to someone who's non-judgmental, to somebody who's neutral, to somebody who is just going to absorb what they're saying, maybe even ask questions. But you know, we're all good people. When somebody comes to us and they appear to be hurting, we want to reach out, we want to do something, we want to help. Believe me, if somebody wants you to solve their problems, if they want you to help them, they're going to ask you for it. But most people who just want to talk and they want to have an opportunity to get something off of their chest, and we'll talk a little bit about those age-old comments too, just be a good ear. You don't know how much value that can be for another human being. It's just to have an opportunity to talk about the things that probably disturb them the most in life. Um, as, the, uh, as the introduction was said about me earlier, I had spent a number of years actually being in a role where I listened to people. I got paid for listening to people. Isn't that a cool job? And I began to find out that sometimes half of resolving another person's conflict in their life is giving them a chance to talk about it in a non-judgmental environment. Sometimes people just want to be heard and not judged. So think about that the next time somebody wants to talk to you. If they want your help, they're going to ask for your help. If they want your ear, then that's essentially what they're asking. And offer it to them. They obviously have an enormous amount of respect for you to trust you enough to want to talk to you about some of the most sensitive things that they deal with in their life. It gives others an opportunity to vent. Uh, so what are some of those old saying? We go, I've got to get it off my chest. Um, you know, he's, uh, I've, I've got to be able to vent. Picture the tea kettle sitting on a stove with uh, steam coming out of it. Um, that's how it feels. Isn't that how it feels? If we've got something built up on the inside of us and we need to get it out, it feels like a pressure. It's an emotional pressure. So it feels so good to vent. <clears throat> Having an opportunity to speak to someone who's non-judgmental is that chance. It is that chance for that individual to seek their own resolution to their problem. If they're not talking to you, they're talking to themselves. Now, I'm not going to ask for hands on this, but do we kind of all talk to ourselves? Yes. Yeah. You know, I thought Bluetooth was a real savior when it came along. <laughs> so now I could walk down hallways with a Bluetooth on and talk to myself, and people didn't look oddly at me. But before that, it was always a risk. But we do talk to ourselves. And we are not the best person to talk to when it comes to trying to resolve our problems. We tend to be our own worst enemy. You really need to have somebody who's a sensitive listener. You need to have somebody who can be neutral, yet to be safe enough for you to be able to share some of the more critical things that you're dealing with in your life. Sometimes um, uh, you may only have one person like that in your life, but consider yourself lucky if you do have that one person. It's empowering to be listened to. I read a great article about Bill Clinton's listening abilities, and the writer went on to say that if you were in a room with Bill Clinton having a conversation, Bill Clinton could make you feel like the most interesting person in that room. And how did Bill Clinton do it? He listened and he asked questions about you. He showed interest in who you were. Can you imagine 
a former president of the United States being interested in who you are and what you do, but it doesn't take a president. It doesn't really take a president to make you feel good about yourself. It takes, again, that good, sensitive, caring individual with good listening skills just to ask questions. I know when people ask questions about me, Tom, what do you do for a living? That's interesting. Tell me more. I'm already formulating in my mind, this is a pretty clever individual. I think I'd like to get to know them a little bit better. You know, they're asking questions about me. They're interested in me, so I mean, they're very, very fascinating. I'm gonna have to learn a little more about them. And this is so, because if we look at, uh, look at that on the flip side, how about people who ignore us? Are we interested in finding out more about them? No, no, these are the people that we're drawn away from. So the people that express interest in us, we will ultimately express interest in knowing more about them. It creates stronger personal relationships because listening is essential. I had somebody tell me once that they knew that their relationship has ended when they stopped talking to their partner. And I thought about that and I said, I'm willing to bet your relationship ended before that. I'm willing to bet that your relationship ended when you stopped listening to each other. I'm a big fan of listening. Eh, I'm kind of a fan of talking too, but um, once you stop listening, you stop learning, don't you? You stop becoming enlightened. You stop finding out new things when you stop listening. And when you stop listening, any conversation or words that come after that can only be an exercise in futility. Uh, years ago, um, I did have a relationship that ended and we struggled to find things to talk about to the point where we talked about our kids. We knew about our kids. How could we possibly be talking about our kids? We weren't talking about anything new. So as I look back, it's when we stopped listening. It wasn't when we stopped talking with one another. So be the listener, become the role model. Good listeners are not born, they're inspired. They're inspired by people who listen to them. Show what it looks like to be a good listener. Go out of your way to want to create an environment where you can focus on the speaker and the speaker alone. Ask, ask questions. You're not, you're not just going to show an interest, you will be interested. The more you become a great speaker, the more people around you, you're gonna find that the people are more interesting. You won't have to go to the movies. You won't have to get books from the library. You won't have to seek out new sources of uh, enlightenment. You're going to be able to find those in the people that are sitting right next to you. Have you ever really explored anything with some of the people that are closest to you, what their experiences are in life? You never know when you're going to come across some nugget or gem and find out, gosh, I've been working with the most interesting person that I think I have ever come across in my life for the last five years, and I'm just finding out now. It's quite common. Patience is a virtue. One of my students many years ago came to me and said, Tom, my, uh, my relationship with my husband is involving nothing but screaming and yelling. That's how we communicate. He comes home from work and he'll scream at me. And I'll scream louder because I want him to hear me. But then he screams louder and then I have to scream louder. Uh, again, I'm not going to ask for hands, but if anybody in here has ever been in a screaming match, you know how futile that is. I mean, it just sucks all the oxygen out of your body. It, it can be exhausting. You might say things that you didn't mean, but ultimately, you're not going to get anywhere. You're both going to retreat to your separate corners, and you're going to be tired. And you're going to be prepared to come back in the next round after you've had an opportunity to rest. And she said, I don't want my relationship to be like this anymore. She says, I want things to change. I want things to be better. What do I do? So I said to her, how long has your relationship been like this? And she says, five years, ever since we've been married. So I said, well, if the two of you have been willing to devote five years to yelling and screaming at each other, I think that you have to be prepared to at least devote the next five years to healing and getting on with the relationship that includes communicating properly with one another and listening. And the best time to start that is right now. <laughs> she said, five years is a long time. I said, you didn't think that when you were yelling and screaming at each other. So if you want to have a good relationship, it may take an equal amount of time to get on a good solid footing as it did to get into the way that you are with one another right now. 
She did. She did. She'd come back and she'd report to me. She'd say, you've been in college for two months and you're already Dr. Phil. But he was noticing the difference in her. He was noticing that her style had changed. When he'd scream, she'd listen. She'd acknowledge. She'd nod. Maybe she'd say, you know what? Maybe this isn't a good time for us to finish this conversation. It seems as though both of our emotions are running high. But we need to talk about this. Can we just take a breather and come back? She knew all of the right things to say. And when you're involved in a relationship like this, expect that significant other of yours to be suspicious. They're going to say, this isn't the way we play the game all the time. I yell at you, you're supposed to yell back at me, you don't yell anymore. I don't know how to play this game. Change the rules of the game. You want to have a relationship where you're communicating with one another. Don't fall into the trap. Set the new rule. Eventually, if you show consistency and perseverance, that individual involved in your life is going to see, this is the way that we are going to be in the future, so I have to learn to do this. I have to learn to be able to talk, and I have to be able to listen. And prepare to be changed. You can change significantly the life of one individual by becoming a strong listener, but your own life is going to be changed too. Um, over the years where I learned the importance of listening, I became interested in everybody. I was the nightmare passenger to sit next to on a long plane flight. People would pretend that they'd fallen asleep because once they tell me what they did for a living, I may have no idea what it was, but I needed to continue to ask more and more questions and mine deeper and deeper. Some people don't mind that. Some people do. Um, especially when they know that they're stuck next to you on an airplane on a long flight. But. It made me a more curious person, and by being a more curious person, I learned some amazing things about some amazing people who normally would only come into my life for a very short amount of time. But I wanted to make sure that during that opportunity, it was going to be as much of a good experience for me by listening as it was an opportunity for them to share information about their own personal lives with me. So in a summary, don't discriminate in your listening. Don't be afraid to learn new things. If you're afraid of being changed, that's okay. Remember what I said before, nobody is going to change you if you don't want to change. That's that old saying. My students in my class will say, I've got somebody in my life I've been trying to change for years, and they just won't change. And I says, give up. They're not going to. The only way that you can make the situation different is by changing yourself. That's where you have the control. When you change your reactions to that individual, you're going to modify their behaviors towards you. But no one is going to change. I'm pretty sure that when my wife Sue and I came together as a couple, she probably looked at me and said, Tom's a pretty nice guy, but with a little bit of work, I might really have something here. <laughs> so Tom, of course, not realizing that there was going to be an attempt to change him, figured, um, hey, I'm pretty comfortable with myself. You know, I, uh, I don't see anything major to change. But to Sue's credit, she did change one thing. For some stupid reason, I didn't like wearing seatbelts, uh, which was not a, not a smart thing. And Sue refused to get into the car with me. So her behaviors of refusing to ride with me caused me to change my behaviors about seatbelts. She may have changed other things in me, too, in a subtle way. And I don't want to ask her, because I think that, that would be scary. <laughs> But I think that the emphasis is, though, if we don't want to change, we're not going to change, especially if somebody else thinks we should. But you can certainly modify somebody else's behavior by changing your own reactions to them. Please don't try to solve my problem. Just listen to me. Be that sensitive here. You know what? Um, listening is the other half of communication, and it's what the world needs more of right now. We know about the strife that's going on in the world. How can we avoid it? We're in a college. We're intelligent people. We watch the news. We listen. We read. We understand what's happening in this world around us. We wish that we could make a change. We wish that we could make things different. But we just can't. But on the individual basis, sometimes people just having the opportunity to have your sensitive and caring ear to be able to listen to them is all of the change that they're going to need. They get a chance to listen to themselves talking to you. Usually it's just inside their head. And I said before, that talking to yourself 
is not a good audience. If you do talk to yourself, try not to get too controversial and get into an argument. <laughs> you, really, you really want to find somebody else who is going to be neutral and non-judgmental. And if you have that person in your life, consider yourself to be lucky. Don't take advantage of them and burn them out. But do take an opportunity to talk to them at any opportunity that you can about the things that are the most sensitive and the most important to you. Because they'll do just what a good friend does. They'll listen and they'll ask questions. Because they'll know, you're smart enough, you know what needs to be done to figure this out. But you need to get it off your chest. You need to be able to hear your own words being presented to another person. So prefer listening over talking. Um, I like to say I prefer listening over talking. I know some of my students are in the audience today and they might differ with that. But if you do, please share it with me when we're in class tomorrow. I like to say that um, when you listen, you, you learn, you become enlightened. So when you have the opportunity to talk, doesn't that make your speech that much more interesting rather than somebody who spends more time talking and less time listening? So um, be a listener. It's truly, truly, um, I think, a bit lacking in our world today. Wouldn't most of us agree with it as we watch the news at night? Everybody seems to be talking and nobody seems to be listening. Almost like it's a contest. It's not a contest. The person who talks the most never wins the award. And I'm not even aware of an award being given, but sometimes it appears to be a contest. So become the listener. The listener's got a lot of respect. I've been at meetings, and you may not guess this about me, but there was a time in my life I was a quiet person. I listened to everything, and I used to go to meetings, and everybody else would be talking, and I would be listening. And as soon as I said, excuse me, everybody else quieted down. Because the quiet guy wants to talk now. Let's see what the quiet guy has to say. He hasn't said anything for a half an hour, but he's been here and he's been listening. So everybody would pay attention to me. And all I had to do was hope that now that they're paying attention to me, that I had something especially clever to say because I've been listening for a half an hour. But choose listening over talking. You talk when you can, you talk when you must but absorb as much information as you possibly can. So when you do talk, it's substantial. So manage the external noise. That's kind of easy. Get out of the environment sometimes. Um, get out of the familiar places. Get away from the computer. Shut your cell phone off. Do the things that you need to do to make sure that when you focus on that individual who's talking to you, they don't have to wonder if you're listening. They know you're listening. They can tell it in your body language. They can tell it by the questions that you're asking, that you're actually listening to them. So try to manage those noises. It can be a challenge, but it's not as challenging as um, turning the volume down on the internal noises. You're not going to make the noise go away. You're not going to make the voices go away. But as long as you recognize that they're there and they're competing for your time and attention when you really want to be focusing on the person that you're with and the person that you're talking to, you can up your level of concentration. You can make sure that the sole purpose of your being at that moment is to focus on the person that you are with. The voices will always be there, they won't go away. Uh, and sometimes when you really try to focus on somebody else, they're gonna get obnoxious and the noise is gonna get louder. Play with them. You'll ultimately win out. So um, focus on the speaker and not on your watch. Has anybody ever been talking to somebody and you're really into a conversation and they do this, what, they, what does that do to you? Um, it, it stops me dead in my tracks. I'm there, I, am I keeping you from going someplace? Uh, am I interrupting you? I mean, I've talked to some people that I felt like I was the most boring creature on the place of the earth. It was almost like they couldn't wait to get away from me because that's how they made me feel. Because they seem to be so focused on trying to be someplace else at that particular time. Now, we're really in tune now with people's body language, aren't we? We know when other people do this, look at the watch or glance over at the computer screen. Are we as aware when we do it to other people? Probably not. We do some exercises in my class on body language, and students always seem to go away amazed at what their body language says to other people. They may be in tune to what your body language is saying to them, but they don't have a clue as to what their body language is saying back to you. So try to be in tune with what your gestures and movements and, and everything else say to somebody else because we tend to watch body language almost as acutely as we will listen to the spoken word. And I've heard everything you said, I just wasn't listening. 
This is a true statement. We hear voices, people talking to us all the time, and we are sometimes on the periphery of understanding and listening. I've already told you that I'm able to say to my wife, Sue, I've heard you, but I wasn't listening. So could you please repeat what you said? And she's more than willing to repeat what she said. As you put the request to somebody, and they know that you're serious about listening to them, just be honest and say, I didn't, I didn't listen, I'm sorry. But I want to listen to you. You have my full attention right now. I'll tell you, if somebody were to say that to me, I'd be very impressed with them. I'd have to say, this is the type of person I want to get to know. They care about me. They care about what I have to say. As opposed to the person who probably couldn't care less than the next words that came out of my mouth. So finally, listen and welcome change. Be the change agent in other people's lives. But be courageous. I think that's what I want to say today is be courageous. Step outside of your comfort zone. Go to that rally being held by that opposition group that you have sworn to be against for the rest of your life. Just out of curiosity, find out what they're talking about. You can probably walk away from that more convinced that they're wrong and you're right. But I'm willing to bet that you're going to walk away with something else. You're going to walk away with an understanding. When you say to someone, I understand you, it doesn't mean that you're agreeing with them. It's quite easy to say, I understand where you're coming from. I still don't agree with you, but I have a better understanding of your perspective and everything right now. How enlightening that can be for you. So now going forward, if you decide that you're going to dislike them with every bone in your body, you have some good reason to do it. So stretch yourself. Step outside of your comfort zone. Listen to people that you don't agree with. You never know where you're going to find a nugget. You never know where you're going to have a life-changing event. If you limit yourself to just listening to people that sound like you. You're going to stay within a very small group of people. Stretch it once in a while. You might not feel comfortable doing it, but I think coming out the other end, you'll probably be satisfied that you took the opportunity to learn and you took the opportunity to step forward. I want to thank all of you for coming here today and listening, and I wish all of you a good afternoon.